Mark Esconti reporting on Nick Sandman. You remember Covington High School kids that they were chanting on the on the in front of the Lincoln Monument a couple of months ago. You remember and the, and uh, a bunch of black racists started chanting and, and screaming at them and screaming them down from the background. The Indian man banging a drum in the kid's face. Right? Remember the kids that went to, to went to Washington D.C. on a on a trip to uh, to protest abortion or something. Remember that. So, so the kid lost. Wow, fucking kid lost. He lost his $250 million defamation case. Remember, let's, let's take a stroll down memory lane, you remember? Brave kid held his ground, right? Young kids, they, there they are, Lincoln Monument, <clears throat> right on the uh, edge there. And uh, the, the, the Indian man, whatever his name is, came up, started banging the drum in the kid's face. And what is that's not what the lawsuit is about. Is there anything illegal going on here? No, it's because the Washington Post and CNN and the rest of the media spun the story to say that the kids were instigating the man. Right? And they totally neglected to mention the, the, the blacks in the background harassing, harassing the whole thing, in, in, encouraging, instigating the whole thing, the, the black Muslims. <laughs> so the $250 million lawsuit filed by Nick, San, Nick Sandman against the Washington Post has been dismissed by a federal judge. U.S. District Judge William Bertel, Bertelsman, a Jew, <sighs> Judge Williams Bertelman, Bertelsman, who heard oral arguments uh, earlier this month, issued the ruling on Friday. Uh, so it's summary judgment. There was no trial. There's just summary judgment. In the case that, the gar- that garnered national attention after Sandman became embroiled in a divisive response to an encounter between him and his Covington Catholic School classmates and Native American and, and the Native American on the National Mall. The Washington Post was pleased with the dismissal. <laughs> of course they were. Sandman's family plans to appeal Bertelsman's ruling according to a statement sent to the Inquirer. Good, good. Let them appeal, you know, maybe this is a Supreme Court case. I don't know. Uh, let, let's keep reading. January encounter. The January encounter led to threats uh, lobbed at Sandman who later appeared on the national tele- on national television to say he felt he had done nothing wrong. Of course he didn't do anything wrong. It was the wrong was done to him. Wasn't that obvious? This is the this is the, you're, I'm reading mainstream media, so the spin is in favor of the the poor Indian man and forget about the hostile blacks in the background. They, they don't count. I believe fighting for justice for my son and family is of vital national importance, his father said. If what was done to Nicholas is not legally actionable, then no one is safe. Mm, I don't know. I don't know about that, right? How much, how bad, how bad did the Washington Post smear the kid? Well, pretty bad, you know. So, uh, let's see, what else is there? So that you remember him. He looks like, uh, he looks like uh, Opie Taylor from, from, you know, from fucking, <laughs> from old television, right? He's a nice little kid. He's on TV. Listening to him and standing there. In hindsight, I wish we could have walked away and avoided the whole thing. But I can't say that I'm sorry for listening to him and standing there. So you- he held his ground, right? Now the black commentator will tell you why. He's, he's so bad because he was wearing his MAGA hat, right? Because it was about the hat, right? At the time, back in January, that hat, still, it's still a hot-button hat. It's still a hot, that hat will raise, you know, he'll get Clinton people fucking screaming and yelling, the fucking racist hat, the fucking racist red hat. It was about a hat. The kid wore his hat, a bunch of kids, a bunch of college kids, high school kids, Covington high school kids. They go to a mall. And, uh, and and they're carrying on their team spirit, right? And a bunch of bunch of radicals decide to, to intervene, try try to disrupt their peace. Right? 
their kids. They're waiting for their bus to go back to wherever they're from. I had a bunch of, you know, Indian guy thinks he's Mr. Spiritual, right? Fucking coward. Comes up and starts banging the drum in the kid's face as if, as if he's exercising the evil spirits out of the child. Meanwhile, the, the kids, what are they doing wrong? Freedom of expression? They're wearing a hat? And that got your, that your, that got your Indian balls all tied in a knot? And you've got the, the radical blacks hollering out, they're white supremacists, they're white, they're white devil, devil motherfucking devils, they're white, blue-eyed devil motherfuckers. You gotta bake those motherfuckers. That's what they're screaming in the background. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, so, so what do you got, man? So that's, I mean, it's just a short story. It's sad that the kid didn't get any um, restitution for harm done. Is he slandered? Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's a gray area, really. I mean, is it, what is slander? What is libel, you know? The media is the media. They spin a story and they get it wrong, right? So what are we going to do? Start, start, uh, start suing all mainstream media? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's uh, I would have liked to see the kid win, you know, just, for the, just because I would have liked to see him win. But legally, I, I think, uh, you know, in hindsight, does, did he have a very strong case? Probably not as strong as we thought, you know, because it's emotionally charged. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. If the kid, if they take it, if it's well-funded and they go all the way to Supreme Court, they're already at federal court. Maybe they can get it, maybe one more appeal, and then they can uh, try to present it to the Supreme Court. We'll see what happens, you know what I mean? Marcus Conte reporting.